Houston, we've got a bugger. Hey guys, Brian here with The First Layer, the show that explores the world of 3D printing. Today I wanted to talk about basically my number one gripe I've been dealing with in the past week, and that is filament blobs, or as we like to call them sometimes, the bugger. Now, I'm sure you've seen all the horror photos online of various boogers, but what do you do when you get in that scenario? Well, let's take a step back and talk about what causes these boogers. So sometimes when filament doesn't bind to your bed or to your part, it has to go somewhere as it's coming out of your extruder. Now, in lucky cases, we get the spaghetti bomb that many of us are familiar with, but sometimes it just tends to curl back upon itself. Now, when filament is melted, it will tend to bind to something warmer, namely your hot end block. And as it curls over itself, it just creates a cataclysmic event of building up over and over. And even though it may be cool on the outside, on the inside, it's kind of like a volcano where it still has that heat and it's radiating outwards. Now, the filament, again, it's not going to go and bind to the bed or your part because it's still more desirable to bind to itself. And that's where we see these blobs growing. Now, if you're lucky enough to catch it early on and you stop your print, you can sometimes just go and yank it off and continue with your print. But as seen in this photo, I had quite a heck of a blob on my Ender 5. So I wanted to show you guys my trick to cleaning these off easy. And it's actually a bit easier than you may think. Now, when clearing a blob that has encompassed your heat cartridge and your thermistor, it is tempting to rip it off, but then that can potentially damage the thermistor, and you really don't want to replace those unless you absolutely have to. So here's the easiest way of doing it. Step one, we want to remove the filament from our hot end. So you want to go and take your filament, make sure your nozzle is heated up to its regular area, and pull that filament right out of the heat block. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to heat up the entire hot end assembly and we don't want our filament to swell and get stuck on there, which is going to cause us more headaches in the long run. Now, step two here seems kind of counterproductive. Step two involves removing the fan over your heat sink. And why we're going to do this is because we are actually going to impose heat creep because we want to get heating all over the heat block and everywhere where that filament may have touched. So filament's naturally going to curl upwards, and in some cases, you may not need to remove this fan if it sticks entirely on the block. But in my case, it crept up in around the heat sinks, so I said, let's go ahead and heat up the whole assembly. Now, luckily, as the heat radiates up, it doesn't really impact the wheels I've found on the carriage, and so you can leave it at a temperature of 235 for a while. But this is where it leads into step three. Step three is to wait. Now I'm going to show you this little time lapse here of fixing this particular hot end by heating it up to 240 degrees Celsius and waiting. And it doesn't look like it's doing anything for a long time, but if you ever go and touch it just ever so slightly, you're going to find that the filament itself is melted on the inside and you're just waiting to break that suction. So at one point here in the video, you're going to see uh, a little air gap open up. And after that, it just starts to go slowly, slowly, and then poof, it's fallen right off the heat block. Now, at this stage, you want to get in there with some kind of small cleaning tool, preferably something that is not metal because we don't want to short out the heat cartridge or short out the thermistor there. And we just want to clean up as much as we can because sometimes these materials will turn to liquid and melt away. But other times, in this case, because somebody here forgot that we were working with ABS filament, it tends to go and stick to itself and doesn't exactly move nicely. So it sometimes needs that little extra assistance to clear it off the block. Now you'll notice the silicon sock in here is pretty much end of life. Now usually when you try to remove these when it's this bad, they're going to end up tearing. Or if you apply more heat, they may actually end up dissolving on you as I found in one case. So it's always a good idea to have extra silicon socks on hand. They're a very cheap purchase and they are very important in maintaining an insulation barrier around a heat block if you don't have the captain tape uh, wraparounds. But apart from that, with this time lapse, it only took about 15 to 20 minutes for that block of filament to loosen up and eventually dribble off. And in this case, I was very lucky in that it did not bind to the heat cartridge. So luckily on this Creality build, there was captain tape wrapped around the heat cartridge and around the thermistor that made it an undesirable surface for that filament to bind to as it flowed up and so it fell off. 
In many other cases, when you don't have Captain Tape on there, it may stick to there. And that's when we have to go in and bring out a mini blowtorch or similar to go and melt away that little excess filament on the cartridge. Now, the big caveat of this is that it tends to smell pretty bad. I, I do recommend you have an open window nearby uh, because it's just not a, a very pleasant smell and sometimes you can be burning the filament. So you got to find that healthy balance that works for you. In my case, it's just a bit of an annoying no odor for a few minutes here, but it cleans up quite nicely. And just that little extra effort has saved me a bunch of time in rebuilding the block and rebuilding the hot end, something I just don't like to do. I like to get my machines going up and again, and it's not never fun waking up after eight hours and seeing that something went awry in the middle of the night. But at least now we have a method to go and attempt to save our hot end without just buying a new hot end. So I hope this trick helps you guys in getting rid of these blobs on your hot end because you don't need to replace your hot end if this ever happens. Now, it, some people seem to think that this is a sign that there is something wrong with your nozzle or your hot end. That's not always the case. In fact, most of the time I find the issue is that the nozzle is too high off the bed or something has caused the print itself to lift off the bed and then at a certain point depending on the air gap either you're lucky enough to get a spaghetti monster or you end up with the dreaded blob so let me know in the comments below what you guys think about blobs do you get them often or am i just a complete idiot and if if you do get them let me know if this trick works out for you guys but until next time remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print and this is a great example if you don't get your first layer right you're gonna end up with a booger We'll see you next time. Bye for now.